Good morning. Today is this kind of crazy. It's snowing here in Atlanta, and uh, <laughs> that's causing problems. It's causing a lot of problems, and it's amazing. There's a few of us here at the office. Let me show you some stuff. <laughs> Let's see. Will that work? That's me doing my Nanook of the North act, and I took quite a few clowning. And that's, that's what's going on out in the world today. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. But what we're going to talk about today is how you can develop the hustler's mindset, how you can develop this way of thinking that benefits you throughout your life. It is uh, really different. It's uh, really special. And it gives you insights on how to deal with people, how to make money, how to spot opportunities. I call it the hustler's mindset, but I, I figure a better word would be a mindset that always seeks opportunity. It's just an automatic process on looking at the world and seeing opportunity. Plus, let's go ahead and do this. I got to do it because I'm enjoying this. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm just going to uh, make that larger for people. We're just going to zoom that in. Now, let's see. Go ahead. Zoom in. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now, let's talk about this. And if you didn't know, I'm Glendon Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu, where your real financial education begins. Let's talk about Bitcoin for a second. I have been preaching on this channel and other channels that Bitcoin was a bubble, is a bubble, and I had some Bitcoin and I sold it all at the height of the market. Bitcoin is crashing. Now, why didn't I get caught up in the hype? Let's talk about that. Um, why didn't I get caught up in the hype? Why was it... I was able to see this for what it was. Okay, I'm just checking that I don't create a disaster here because, whoa, that was almost a disaster. <laughs> that was almost a very bad disaster. That stream would have been over real quick. Um, part of it is experience. Part of it is knowing what a bubble looks like. Part of it is going through this several times. Let's make sure that's the right size. Now, there's a always opportunity. N never get it twisted that, you know, there's this is a once in a lifetime thing. And no, no, no. There's always opportunity. There's opportunity where you live. There's opportunity. There's opportunity where you, I mean, there's opportunity everywhere. Okay, let's just make sure that people understand that and that people are aware there's always opportunity. Now, one of the things, oh, I almost forgot. Hold on a second. I'm so, I'm clowning so much here that I'm forgetting important stuff. And today's offer, and I, I told you, I know a lot of people thought I was not going to uh, to do this. They thought it was like, it's not going to happen. But, and I'm going to make sure that this is done correctly. Where is it? All right. Let's just get into that. All right. Oh, yeah, there's stuff there now. There's stuff there, baby boy. 
Yes, there is. All right. And this goes in very much hand in hand with what we're talking about today and with the hustler's mindset. So now there's stuff there. It's $99. It's going to go up because we're going to get very, very deep. And, um, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna know, I know exactly what I'm going to do. So uh, hold off on that. So let me come out of here and uh, let me do this real quick. One of the things about the proper mindset is, you know what? Um, let's do this. I know exactly how to do this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is currently 99 bucks and I know I cannot make the URL bigger, but I will get in here and uh, change this a little bit. There we go. Today's special is writing for cash daily. All right. So that link's under the video now. So you can go ahead and grab that. Um, I've only moved over like eight or nine modules. And some point today, I'm going to move over the rest. So as long as I'm moving those over, that's 99 bucks for that. So there you go. Once again, it is, uh, I'll show you what's in there. And also, I realized that I have to make it bigger. Zoom that in. All right. It only gives you like a nanosecond before here we go so I've got a lot of stuff in here why you need the course making the time resetting your thinkle thinking thinkle what kind of that that mental reset 5.0 goals and wishes and I actually put that in there twice so there's a lot of stuff to get you going there so it's the links under the video the timeline is how soon that I go ahead and add the rest of the modules before I raise the price. So there, that's how we're gonna do that. And get back to here. How many of you think that when you're gonna try to do something that you're going to fail? How many of you actually think that as your first, second, or third thought whenever you get into an endeavor? <laughs> go ahead and put that in the comments Well, I clean up some of this stuff and actually <laughs> go to act to the regular size and get rid of some stuff so how many of you actually think like that because you shouldn't think like that you should say what's going to happen if this goes right and you should fill your mind with what this go, what, what's going to happen and what it's going to look like, what it's going to taste like, what it's going to feel like if whatever you're trying to do goes right. Because this isn't to say that you'll try something that's going to work out. You must mentally condition yourself. You must mentally become stronger to vet out the situation of it going wrong where if it goes wrong, you mentally say, that's not the outcome I was looking for. Let's try again. You want to treat failure as a process versus the ultimate, I failed, it's not going to work out, I suck, this isn't good, this is a problem. You do not want to be in that situation. You just don't. So let me go ahead and see what's going on in the chat room. Oh, because I actually went back and changed that. 
All right. Now let's see what we got going on in here. What's up, regular web guy? Good morning, young Brandon, Stefan Ozer, HD Wash, Erica Watson, Anton Briggs. <laughs> Save your games, Ronald Stocker, Charlene McKinney, Agent J. Poole. What's going on, Derek Brown? What's up, New Jersey girl? Randall Riley, Hot Song Beats. I listen to Pimping Your Mind for Success almost every day. Awesome. I knew when the guys at the barbershop were talking to Bitcoin, it was something to stay away from. <laughs> Arden, oh, the bleeding has just begun. What's up, Tanya? Uh, Charlie, um, once again, uh, I, I will get into that after I finish the good morning. Sassy Moxie, Lamald. DJ Reps, Archangel, Mr. Big Time, Dashiki Jones. That name just sounds so mean. Ebony Empire, Maya Moto Jones, Eric Watson, the Hectorix, young Oh, you you guilty, Brandon? Tanya. Dashiki, not failure, but many doubts. Often talking myself out of trying. That's a very important distinction. Uh the Wild Jones Report, Honey Bunny, uh Key. The original lady pimp. What's up? We ain't snowed in. We can get out here and make it happen. All right. So to address, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say names. I'm just going to say that when you're out here starting real businesses, you know, the upscale garage sale, uh, GC solutions, where I wasn't selling courses, I wasn't selling information, you learn a few things and you learn that typically fast money isn't last money. And what I mean is fast money doesn't last. So anything where you can get in and make a gang of money really, really quick, it typically is something that's going to happen to it because the volatility. This isn't to say that, I mean, there are people who made billions off of Bitcoin. And there will be people who will continue to make money. But once again, the hustler's mindset is about the long game. When you're dibbing and you're dabbing and you're doing all this trendy stuff, you do not have long-term focus. And without long-term focus, long-term wealth is very hard to achieve. Uh, the people, I, I mean, I bought Bitcoin in 2000. 10 when it was like eight cents that does not make me a genius it was like here's something new let's buy some see what happens that's all that was i wasn't a fortune teller i didn't knew it was going to happen and at its height i sold my bitcoin because i knew and i, I figured i had left about five or six grand on the table because I sold at 1857, almost 1800 and six, $18,600. I figured I had left well over five or six G's because I figured it was going to go up to 25, possibly 30, and it was going to do what it's doing now. Hmm. It doesn't make sense. And this is one of the things where you, uh, one of the first tenets of the hustler's mindset is you live in truth. You don't live in his truth. You don't live in her truth. You live in the truth. And the thing is, without intrinsic value, Bitcoin and all cryptocurrencies have a fundamental problem. And the problem is rooted in belief. If, you know, like I still like Ripple, even though Ripple has been ripped, it's just been torn asunder. It has a purpose. It has validity. And that's what I look at. Uh, going back to the upscale garage sale, we used I used to buy on utility. I was like, people need washer and dryers. People need dining room tables. People need beds. People need sofas. When I bought based upon need and got at a good price, <clears throat> I always made crazy money. In the situation of the storage wars, the auction hunter units, that was very rare. That was atypical. And the way the warehouse was set up was 4,000. It was a 10,000 square foot warehouse. 4,000 square feet were dedicated to stuff that was a dollar. And about 
to to the about three thousand square feet was dedicated to midterm stuff like your better washer and dryers, your better dining room tables, your better microwaves, and then that left like literally two thousand square feet of oh golly gee whiz. A, a pool table, a very super nice four or five thousand dining room table that's not hurt, no chips, uh, a pinball machine, uh, you know, a go kart, stuff like that. That went over there. And this is another little trick, and this is a mental trick. When it was all in the same warehouse, people would go from the dollar section to the high end section and try to use that price point to get the nicer stuff because it was all in the same area, right? Well, I got smart. I actually started to create boundaries between the three distinct selling spaces, and that problem went away. Mentally, people go for their, their self-interest. That's what they're going for. Yeah, sure, I sell this table to you for $150 that I could sell for like $2,500. That serves you very well. And I screw myself. And I would have these conversations with people who were just like, it's here. This is the upscale garage sale. It's used. Uh, I even saw this comment on Craigslist. This guy came at me. He says, regardless of condition, if it's used, it should sell for 20 to 25 percent of new price. No, no questions asked. And I was like, where did you get that math from? And part of it is. When you become grounded in truth, which, you know, is going to be a very big part of your success, because when you're grounded in truth, not his truth, her truth, but the truth, you make amazingly better decisions. And, that, and once you start making better decisions, you start having better outcomes. So, I mean, it, it is just that simple. And like with... Uh, that person, I don't think he's ever had a business outside of selling information. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But one of the things, and a lot of people come at me that way, and I'll just go ahead and like, boom. I was like, I had this business. I had this business. This is what we're doing. And they're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. But when you were like, let, let's just be real. Education, online education is very new. But it is vastly, amazingly lucrative. It is. And that's why so many people are getting into it. And that's why I've kind of pivoted my education courses and classes in reality. And I'm taking the long-term approach because the principles I talk about, they are never going to disappear. They're never just going to like, oh, well, you know, truth, honesty, serving your fellow man. That's never going out of style. But Bitcoin... Kindle, uh, Amazon FBA. Oh, let's talk about what's happened with Amazon. You had a lot of Amazon sellers who did not have increasing sales. Q4. Sales went down. They were struggling. This is another fundamental of the hustler's mindset. First one is truth. The second one is conditions always change. Conditions always change. I mean, I'm going to write this here so y'all can have it. Let me get here. So let's just go ahead and go. I'm going to write, oh, really? No, you did not do that to me. Ah, okay. Well, I guess it helps if you turn the, the script on. And you don't hustler's mindset. Uh, number one, live in truth. Number two, conditions. always change. They always change. Number three, 
live and I'm gonna put this in capital letters well <laughs> below your means so um, part of the hustlers mindset is a lifestyle a fundamental philosophy of always being in a position where you have options. You are always in a position of having options so this is one of the reasons that my next house is I'm gonna pay in cash and I'm gonna explain how I think even though things went very well last year right we did very well last year financially that does not mean that we're gonna do very well this year and part of that is not a lack of faith in the product. Man, ain't nothing to do with it. Conditions always change. Right now, there's something that's going on that is very interesting. They're creating apartment complexes that work on a roommate model. So essentially, instead of you paying for the whole apartment, which here in this area is 1500 to 3000 you can get up with some roommates and they're paying you'll pay like 700 so you'll get like three to five people they're building this there's a one brand new place up in Kennesaw called U Berkeley it's supposed to be student housing but there's a lot of people who are living in there they ain't students um, a house in my subdivision sold for 100 G's less. And I was like, okay, did they need that money? How long were they in there? Were they, you know, were they like the first people to buy? And I, I calculate this stuff because conditions are changing. Uh, the price of Bitcoin, it's crashing. The price of all these cryptocurrencies, they're crashing. And BitConnect blew up. I, I really never investigated BitConnect because I didn't understand it and I had so many things going on. But essentially, BitConnect appeared to be a Ponzi scheme. So you've got all of this stuff because these are, you know, living truth. Every year, something happens. Summer, it's slow. Fall, kids go back to school. The American economy picks up. This has been happening for 18 years. Whether it picks up to a high degree or a low degree, it always picks up. So September, the kids go back to school. Sales go up September. They go up October. They go up November. Uh, they go up December. Typically, if you're selling physical products, they crash January and February. This keeps happening. This cycle continues to happen. And this is why there's so many people who don't have money. Because if your kids are out of school and that sucks out so much money from the economy, because now these parents have to pay for daycare. They have to buy more food. And it, I mean, seriously, I was dating this teacher and she said when her kids were out of school, she couldn't afford to buy wine. I want you to think about that. Wine ain't, you know, well, she was a wine connoisseur. She, let's stop. She was a wine snob. She, she, she got that good stuff. And when her kids were out of school, she couldn't afford wine. Think about that. So you have this, you know, this is, uh, once again, going through living in truth. This is a fundamental truth. The economy acts that way. And conditions always change. And this is why I live well below my means. And number four, I always have options. And that's the, that's the four major tenets of the hustle mindset. Because one of the reasons I d disavow conventional financing, instead of you paying cash for a car, you should get use the bank's money, pay no interest, or pay a little bit the interest, and then take that money that you would be paying on that car uh, and take the money that you would buy the car outright and put it in the market. All right. Well, let's go right back to this. Number two, conditions always change. 
Let's say the market goes sideways. Let's say you lose your job. Let's say you get divorced. Let's say your hours get cut back. Conditions always change. But if you go ahead and spend that cash and buy that car and be done with it, it doesn't matter if conditions change because it's already paid for. And the only thing you have to do is pay insurance. That's it. And if you really wanted to get funky and your money got funky and you pay liability insurance, which would be stupid on my car since they are high value. But I'm just saying by paying for your car up front, the future does not matter. But if you have a car payment, so many things could happen. You know, heavens forbid you could get sick. Um, so many, you're, you're the main bread, there's just so many things that can happen. Because once again, going back to my upbringing, I saw people who were sick, cancer ridden. Did they lose their homes? Nope. House was paid for. Car was paid for. I saw people go through extremely hard times. I mean, seriously, uh, my grandmother would not sign over the title of the house to my mother. She would not do it. Uh, she knew my mother was financially irresponsible. But because that house was paid off, I had stability. Do you know I grew up in the same house, and, and when I left, I was uh, 18, and I joined the military. Lived in the same address for you know from birth to me leaving. Psycho psychologically for a kid, that is one of the best things to happen because it's boring to the kid, but subconsciously, this gives this kid stability because things aren't drastically changing. True story. All right, let me get in the comments. Uh, where did I stop? Whoa, it jumped. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. All right, so the Wild Jones report. Good morning, honey. Young Brandon, you spoke of the diving board exercise. I will merely do that unintentionally. Still could not complete a single landing. Um, that's indicative of a lot of negative thinking, which is good that you once you been once you be able to mentally land correctly, your life will change. So keep practicing. Uh, overthink a lot, my Mito Jones. Charlene McKinney, I've done that, but when I started selling tasers and people bought them, it gave me a different perspective and it made me excited to sell my oils and other products. Okay. Uh, that reminds me of the story of a friend who had a Shopify store and once his first sale came in, he was like, oh my, this is real. It's like, dude, it's been real. I've been telling you this for years. Uh, my, when I don't execute, it puts me back in the box and never actually getting started. Wow, I used to be outgoing, but in the last few years, I've been in the books and not applying the knowledge. You got to execute. What's up, David Cologne? Poo wow. Good day. You give me some push in this business world. Awesome. Planning stationary and this. Happy New Year. That's a savage word. Yeah, I was the only one doing it. No one else was doing it. What's up, Marquise? Ray Owens. <laughs> My Amito. Uh, I have a half of the bottom of my courses in ebooks. Stefan, I recently sold Amazon Echo 2 for $70 that I won from an office party. Waiting for Amazon to raise the price back to $99. Wow. What's up, Prince? Eric and Cole, using student housing model, four rooms, one common area. Yep, that's a lot of that's going down. When you see things like that, that means a lot of things are funky with the economy. <laughs> Big connect. That was funny. Facts. Kids cost. My lady had to squeeze out her bra over the food to save on some soft money. Stop it, man. Stop it. What's up, Diana Thompson? Jay Fleming. 
Uh, I'm telling you, I just had this car note convo with my nephew. He didn't want to listen, though. My husband does, lo- does not allow car notes here. I mean, seriously, if you're making less than 50 Gs, you don't, you don't need a car note. If you're making 75, I mean, it's just, it's just bad news. What's up, DS? BC Hangel and hello. <laughs> Stability is great. I didn't experience extreme change until I became uh, an adult. What's up, Mr. High Profile? You know, let's get to some other principles of the hustler's mindset. All right, so number one, you live in truth. And living in truth is hard because there's some things that you're just not going to like about yourself. You're not going to like about life. So pretending that they don't exist is not going to help you. Number two is probably one of the biggest things. Conditions always change. Number three, live well below your means. Number four, you're always in the position of having options. And that's what happens when you have your car paid off, you have your house paid off. Let's say um, you got a job you hate, but your house is paid off, your car is paid off, you got 50 Gs in the bank. You can quit. (laughs) You can go. So number five is a big one, is a very, very big one. And a lot of people are going to have a big problem with this. You assume the worst and have two to three plans. You assume the worst, and let's see, I'm going to have to use this eraser because this is not, you can't even make that out. Come on. All right, so you assume the, there we go. Well, okay. That's a better, that's a little bit better. Now, Let's talk about this year. Conditions have changed. And one of my goals is to make a thousand bucks a day. And I'm, I've hit it a few times, but I'm not consistent with it. So that's one of my plans because at a thousand bucks a day, oh yeah, with no paid traffic, with no funnel, with no e well maybe a little email marketing that's a tall goal right but i've done it before and the reason is if i can make a thousand dollars a day without any of that stuff once i bring it back then i can make more but right now i'm doing the hard work of doing these live streams i'm doing what i'm telling you with the direct response marketing i'm actually doing what i teach which is kind of rare on the internet, I know, right? But you gotta assume the worst. So like last year, great year, I actually banked a lot of that money. I did not go into this, well, you know, next year it's gonna even be better. Possibly, and this is another thing you have to understand. It's not a, ma- it's not a matter of how hard you work when you have a lot of external conditions. I could do the same thing I did last year on YouTube. Well, I know on YouTube it doesn't work anymore. And Facebook, and it just will not work because conditions always change. So big reset, like, okay, what are we going to do this year? We're going to do a lot of direct response marketing. We're going to put a lot of stuff out. We're going to talk to the people direct. We're going to ask them questions, so on and so forth. Because I assume the worst. And the thing is, you also... And this, this this is huge here. Oh, I didn't even have to do that. You act broke all right my my right my handwriting was so much better on the first one. I'm going to slow it down. I think that's the thing I got to do. I got to pause here. All right. So you act 
broke. But you think and act like a king. Uh, you think, let's see. Yeah, you act broke, but you think and act like a king. Now, it's a little dicey, but since I've gone through such extreme financial hardships, that boarding house experience, it scarred me for life. I'm just never going to allow myself to be in a position where I can even get close to that. I am always going to have options. And part of that is, let's say, like, right now, we have the ability to hire two or three more people. But I don't think that would be prudent. And actually, I have reduced some hours because I don't know how this year is going to go. And I always want to be in the position because, see, this is something else, too, and this is going to sound very, very rough. But let's say the economy goes sideways. Guess what? The cost of labor just got real cheap. Because people are getting laid off. Uh, folks who normally wouldn't work for XYZ will work for XYZ. Because I'm acting broke, but I'm thinking and acting like a king at all times. Because you never know when the proper situation is going to come. Uh, it's wonderful feeling to have a house that's paid for. At the age of 40, I have no mortgage. And wouldn't have a car payment if I didn't buy a new car. Well, congratulations. I am looking to, to know how that feels. Again. Not having the car knows the best feeling. Uh, Archangel, the roommate model is normal in Los Angeles. It's crazy how many people wonder how I live by myself. BC, I had three cars paid for a while. What's up, Zola? What's up, Carlton? That's some 48 Laws lessons. Good morning, Goleen. Uh, I have several. <laughs> Go to. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Hold on a second. Y'all got to learn how to use the search button. Uh, let's see. Not here. Oh, I've took it off in the main page. Yeah, just go to the playlist. Let's see. There's a lot of playlist. Well, this channel's like nine, almost nine years old. Yeah. Go here. There'll be some board now stuff. Uh, there'll be some Craigslist stuff. I actually stopped telling. Yeah, this is where this is a good one. A lot of people like this one. So, yeah, that's where you go to get that. I got you. I got you, man. Oh, once again, I need to remind people. That today, uh, while I'm getting all this stuff over, and the links is under the video, writing for cash, the ultimate goal setting course. What I'm going to do is transfer the old course over, and then I'm going to add some new stuff. So that's why the price is going to jump, because once you get into this habit, it will change your life. You can get it for 99 bucks. The link's below. Go at it, because uh, today I will, well, I don't know, because like I said, I can get around. Uh, uh, something else, too, and this, uh, this goes into living like a king. As a business owner, you get to dictate where your office is going to be. Well, that's what I feel should be the case, and one of the reasons I'm here in the office is I only live three miles away. I, I don't have a long commute. I doubt I'll put... 
five thousand miles on my cars a piece. I'm, I might not even get ten thousand miles. This is by design. This isn't an accident. This isn't. This is by design. And one of the things is act broke, but think and act like a king is. You got to make some moves. Like, uh, just don't buy a house. You know, let's say uh, this is what happens to a lot of people. They'll go out to Latonia, South DeKalb, uh, Cascade, uh, East Point, and they'll get these wonderfully lovely, beautiful homes. They're they're the bomb. They're nice, and they're also like half, or in some cases, one third of the price of a comparable home somewhere else, right? Now ask yourself, why is that the case? There are no jobs there. There are no jobs. There are no jobs. There are no jobs there. Now, one of the things is, uh, you know, what I pay for where I live, people think that's crazy. But I don't fill up every week. I don't. Most of my time is spent within eight miles of the house. And really, if I had to concentrate, I would say like good 50 percent within three miles of the house. So I don't have road rage. Also, I don't uh, my chances of having accidents are greatly reduced. There's so many good things about that. But if you're a business owner and you have the ability, you go get an office and stuff. uh, Many people would like live 30 minutes for that's crazy. That's just crazy talk. But that's part of acting and living like a king. You get to decide where the kingdom's going to be. Playboy, playgirl. And that's just the real stuff. Uh, Hold on. Yep. um, I think there's some sectors in recession. And this is the thing. I started this business during the recession, right? There's recessions, and then there's your personal recession. If you have a good business model, you may not even experience a recession. (laughs) Roosevelt Davis, hey, Glenda, did you hear that YouTube is taking away their revenue sharing unless you have 4,000 views and watching each month? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me speak plainly on that. When I started this YouTube channel in 2009, I didn't have AdSense. I didn't have AdSense in 2009. I didn't have AdSense in 2010. I didn't have ad, I got I, I got invited for one video in 2011. 2010, I made 60 grand, well 62 grand. 2011, I made ninety thousand dollars. If you are like this is this is what's really really funny because for years. I used to get all of this, well, you're trying to sell some stuff. Yeah, player, I am trying to sell some stuff. Well, you all about the money. Mm-hmm. And I, and I went to not one but two YouTube conferences, and I found out that I was making so much more money than these folks who literally had 1.5 or 2.5 million subscribers. This one girl, her AdSense was six to eight grand a month. And she had 1.5 million subscribers, 68 grand a month. And we, we were just talking, and I was like, oh, okay. And she was like, so what's your AdSense? And at the time, my AdSense was like 25, but I was like, that's just kind of money I use for advertising. She said, really, what do you really make? And I showed her, and her mouth popped open. So I think this is great. What it's going to do is thin out the herd. Uh, what I expect is my uh, CPMs to go back up. I expect... Because a lot of people, now the fact that you cannot automatically just make money and you really don't have a good concept, they're just not going to start YouTube channels. But even with that, if you take my course, well, once I get it together, how to start a YouTube channel and save five to ten grand on your taxes, it's not going to matter. For the real hustlers, for the folks with the hustler mindset, it's not going to matter. I saw that. I thought it was funny. Matter of fact, uh, I think, I think I did. I think I posted some about it on, on Flakebook, as someone calls it. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I posted that, um, and here's my response. You know, it feels like 2009, 2011 on YouTube. This is the period I made well over 200 grand with no AdSense. You see, back then you had to be invited into the partner program. 
Nothing to see here, folks, but it will cut out a lot of crap. I'm starting new channels as well. You got the hustler mindset. Don't matter. I started this channel during the recession. And probably another one's around the corner. That's just how it is. That's, that's the way it goes. Uh, what was your plan to getting on the boarding house? I really didn't have a plan. I got laid off that third time, and it took me literally um, two weeks to get, like about six weeks to get out. Well, let's see. I got the job at Rental Crate, got my first check. No, it took me three weeks to get out after I got the job at Rental Crate. Thank you, Mr. Whole Pro, high profile, move motivation. Ebony, right, my office downtown in Riga space. Tiffany can do it, rock it. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, Tiffany Haddish. She had a very hard life. Yeah, you, YouTube sent me that email last night. I got to hustle. <laughs> Well, Andrea Kelly, if you got to move, you got to move, baby boy. Oh, it, it is a trip. It is a trip. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to come out of here, and I'm going to go to breakfast because I know there are places open. And then when I come back from breakfast, I'm going to work on this. So until I get the other modes in here, this is $99, and then once I get those other modes, modules in there, then I'm going to raise the price. And then we'll discuss some other things in this afternoon stream, or, well, tonight's stream, because I will be back. All right, so be sure to subscribe. Be sure to get on the text notification squad, and I will see you guys later on today, about 6-ish, six, six maybe 6 30. All right. So with that, see you later.